Hello and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Pet McDonald, and in this video, we'll be learning the one to four player game Siketsu, designed by Isaac Shalev and Matt Loomis, and published by IDW Games. Few things rival the beauty of an open garden, and a shared garden is easily tended. But who has the best view? Well, that's a matter of perspective. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, first lay out this garden board in the center of the table. These colored buildings are pagodas. Each player will pick one and sit behind it at the table. This will influence their perspective on the garden as they play. We're setting up for a three player game here, but if playing with two or four players, you'll only use the pink and blue pagodas, leaving this space empty. These are the garden and koi pond tiles. Place the garden tiles into the bag and shuffle them, drawing out one per player, placing them face up randomly in the center of the board, directly across from each player's pagoda like this. In a four player game, you'll be playing on teams, with teammates sitting directly across the table from each other. And after the starting tiles you'd normally place, put the other two on the opposite sides of the center so that your board looks like this. Now place these scoring pawns on the zero space of the score track here. Your pawn and player color are represented by the pagoda in front of you. In a four player game, teammates will move the same pawn, adding their scores together. So only use two. Next, mix the four koi pawn tiles into the bag and have each player draw two tiles from the bag, placing them face down in front of themselves to form a hand. Be sure to keep your tiles hidden from your opponents, but you may look at them at any time. Finally, determine which player is the wisest and give them the cloth bag. Or decide randomly. Either way, that player will go first. And that's the setup. In Siketsu, players will take turns placing garden tiles onto the board, which can gain them immediate points based on the bird illustrations and endgame points based on the flower arrangements. The game is played in a series of turns, starting with the first player and continuing in clockwise order around and around. Now, let's take a look at what happens on a turn. On your turn, you choose a tile from your hand and put it into play. There are two rules to follow when placing a tile. It can only be placed on an empty space and must be put adjacent to a tile already in play. The center area here is not considered a space. The garden tiles will show one of four different types of birds, each a different color. After placing a tile, check to see if the bird on that tile matches any birds on tiles directly adjacent to it. If it does, you've created a flock and score points equal to that collection of birds. In this example, these two green birds are adjacent to the one I placed, so I'd score three points for them. This green bird isn't directly adjacent to the one I placed, so it wouldn't count. It's also important to note that you only score points for a flock of at least two. Placing a bird without any adjacent matches will not score a point. The flowers on a tile are important as well, but are scored at the end of the game, so we'll talk more about that later. This koi pond is a wild tile. When placing it, you can choose the type of bird it represents as you place it. In this example, I'll treat it as a blue bird, scoring me two points for these birds, as well as one for the koi itself. Once used, the koi pond isn't considered a bird anymore and won't be counted towards future flocks. But it will help you later when scoring flowers. After placing your tile, draw a new one into your hand and pass the bag to the player on your left, who will then take their turn. Play will continue like this until all tiles have been placed. When the bag is empty, you'll continue to play tiles until the garden is complete. Then, it's time to score your flowers. There are four types of flowers which will appear on garden tiles, each a different color and shape. As mentioned earlier, the pagodas show your perspective of the garden. This means that you will look down the rows of tiles from your side of the pagoda. So the player here views the rows in this direction, while the player here views them in this way. Using that perspective, count which color of flowers you have the most of in each of your rows. If you have a tie for the most between two or more flowers in the row, just pick one of them to score. You'll gain a certain amount of points for each row based on that number, as shown on screen here. It's important to note that these flowers do not have to be adjacent, they simply need to be in the same row. The koi pawns now count as any color of flower, chosen by each player as they score their own rows. Even though this center tile also shows the koi pond symbol, don't count it when scoring. So as an example, the pink player looks in this direction. They have three yellow flowers in this row, giving them six points, three blue flowers in the second row, earning another six points, four pink flowers and a koi pond in this row, providing 15 points, and so on. 
In a four player game, each team only needs to count their rows once, as they are identical from the other side. The player or team with the most points is the winner. If there is a tie, the tied player who is last in turn order is the winner. The back of the rulebook includes rules for solo play and tournament mode, but I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. And that's everything you need to know to play Sakatsu. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.